coming into the attacking side. A lot of speed, a lot of athleticism, and speaking of that, Harris stopped by Jess Smith. Phenomenal save by Jess Smith, and, and I know that all happened very quickly, but uh, right on the doorstep there, whether it was a kick save or whatever it was, I almost feel like she's looking down at her shin a little bit. Doing it against someone who scored 57 goals this year, and Carson Harris, second in the league in goals and points per game. There, they were fighting. <laughs> Esposito looking into the middle. I think that was Carson Harris, actually, who jarred that away. And in addition to all of her scoring prowess, she also has 64 draw controls, 16 caused turnovers, and 38 ground balls going into the day. So that's Harris. She does it all. Goals this year. She's going to goal. Body saved by Smith. There goes Harris, like a house of fire, trying to get in there. Big hustle. Drake comes out with it. We're getting gritty. That was quite the sequence. There's Harris picking up a draw for herself. It's a taken away and falling. She scoops it right back up. Is that Carson Harris to a T? <laughs> Just never giving up. She always fights for that ball until the end. So Drexel gets possession thanks to Harris. Ben Eric finds Harris. Harris over to the middle. She gets taken out of the play. In. Now Harris, Harris with some space, Boyle there again, Harris looks to dodge, Harris gets her hands inside, picked up behind the cage by Ben Narek. Right, they had to move the ball and try and figure it out, that will cause a little bit of chaos. Alternate possession is what's called here, so I think the, the officiating crew talked it over and said that they might have blown that whistle too early. In that somehow grabbing, plucking the ball out of the air a moment ago. <laughs> Try to feed it into Manella, and Carson Harris goes in the spear. I would say, too, that, you know, early on we saw these officials set the tone of not being too physical, but these teams have the potential to be physical. They're so that penalty adjudicated on the draw control, meaning Drexel, almost like an and-one situation, they get to start here with it. Kind of chaos before they can easily get it over. And a nice when we had a tournament, I actually graduated on Long Island because my... There's Carson Harris, it, it, still quiet today, but does have a nice feed in the middle into Dean. Assist for Harris, a goal for Lindsay Dean, her ninth of the year. Carson Harris is so good visually. She sees things, and she's able to kind of, again, have more composure there, make the pass when she's actually open, and turn and finish. Lindsay makes it look really easy. Sometimes it's hard to turn and have that, you know, finish mentality when there's four other defenders. Pride looking for an opening. Waylon. Good pass by Waylon, but it's on the accelerator through the middle. And Harris knew she was going to do it, and she indeed does draw the three-second violation, I believe. And now she'll get an eight-meter. So that's where the penalty incurred inside the eight-meter arc. So here's Harris looking for her first goal. Goes towards the cage, bounces it in. Carson Harris, 58 goals on the season, and makes it 9-5, to five, Dragons. You know, prior to her finishing that eight meter, I thought to myself, well, just continue to put Drexel on that eight meter. They're not finishing those, you know, they were one for six at halftime. So Carson Harris, she takes advantage of the opportunity that she has. She hasn't gotten too many this game and finishes with against, you know, a t on a tough hash mark there. So I applaud her for that. Harris, one of the graduate students from Grant Hills, Maryland was the CAA Player of the Year last year, the first time a Drexel player has ever won that award. This year was the JMU players and whatnot at all. Pretty much dominated for the most part. Is this year the reigning 2021 Player of the Year from a year ago? Harris takes the shot off the pipe, bounces way out to Wagan. Sissel pops it up and picked up by Carson Harris. Her third draw of the day. 
He continues to fill every single line, it feels like, in the stat column on a daily basis. And, and you love to see that. You know, even if a player maybe is held scoreless for a time, they're still working hard elsewhere, and that's, that's the definition of what Carson Harris does. Another stop by Smith. Chaos in front, and Carson Harris comes out with it. Again, you have to capitalize on those eight meters. And this time she shrieks towards the goal, goes over the crossbar. Get you joining us. I, I mean, we could... Harris. No. Nope. Jess Smith stops it. Same. Lucky side. And finally, a draw control picked up by the Dragons. It's Carson Harris who gets it. And for the first time in this fourth quarter, we played seven minutes. Drexel with the ball on their offensive end. And a violation coming at time for the Dragons. Sissel did not take that, and quickly picking it up is the pride. Ooh. Heading into the box for two minutes, Carson Harris here. Minutes on the clock, Harris will have to sit out for two. And obviously we know how important she is on all ends of the field, and you could see the momentum that Boyle felt from that moment. Inside, Guerra, one-timer. And the run out, who wins it? And it's the Dragons that do. What fantastic hustle on the defensive end by Morris Sissel. Four, four bodies back there diving for the ball. If that doesn't tell you how intense this is right now in the last four minutes of this game, that I mean, it's anyone's game, but they're all fighting so hard. You have to respect that. As the effort. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, Carson Harris just released, so we're back to even strength is what I was going to say. Yeah, and Drexel has the opportunity now to, to kind of take their time with possession. They still have the shot clock that they have to honor, but they don't have to rush it because they are up by those two goals. So we'll see here if Hofstra comes out and tries to pressure a little bit to get that ball back. That knocked away from Harris as she was going hard to the cage with just four seconds on the clock. So she'll get herself a free position opportunity. Three seconds. Does have a goal today, along with an assist. She's in a lot of other things on the field. This would be big. Shoots, goes low, and scores. Carson Harris, her second of the day. It's 13-10, to 10, Drexel Dragons. And Carson Harris shows that she's hard to mark there because on the 1v1, she goes with such speed, and then... You know, you have to try and get your body in front, and you end up fouling to only put her on the 8-meter that she is oh so good at. She's proven that this this last half. But you can see that she runs her body a little bit to the left side to give her right-handed stick side a little bit more room to finish that shot. Way that you can with being a man down. Trying to get aggressive here a bit, and Harris is fouled. And also try to put maybe a little bit of icing on the cake here. 124 to play. And she streaks towards the cage and she shoots a hat trick as Harris scores. 14 to 10. Drexel can feel it now. Well, we can say that Carson Harris improved the eight meter in that second half. And that, that was that proves to show that those those eight meters are really important. And um She's got it down pat, but you want to have her talk to her teammates about it, too, because going one for six in that first half can get, get a little scary. That's her 60th goal of the season. She had 61 last year, so she is looking like a possible another game to top of that mark. So once again, Carson Harris implementing her will today. Three goals, an assist. She has four draw controls in a ground ball. And the score is 14 to 10 for a Drexel program who made their first appearance in the CAA championship last year at large NCAA tournament bid. So also looking at trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the second time in program history for two straight years. Yeah, we asked 
we asked the coaches about being at home for this tournament, and they said it's really nice, but they're still hoping for possibly another road trip. When Axel wins it 14 to 10, they are heading to the CEA championship game on Sunday. 14 to 10, the final here, Callie, and the, the semifinal CAA semifinal game. I've been there. I get it. And when there's another team like the Hofstra that is ready to rally back no matter what until that last whistle blows. It's hard to do that. And so Drexel came out on top on this one, but I give a, a, a huge congratulations to Hofstra for a great season. Our producer, director, and photographer, I'm Tom Eschen. We'll see.